Welcome to my review and overview of the Duroc software. In this video, I will be specifically covering the Duroc Live software that Mini DSP uses for their processors. Although, as far as I know, Duroc Live for Mini DSP and the standard Duroc software that most people run in their computers are exactly the same, other than one of them is built as a plugin and firmware upgrade for the Mini DSP and the other one is standalone software. In this video, I'll be going over the differences and similarities compared to RumiQ Wizard, which was the technique that we covered in the last couple videos. And I'll also be looking at the advantages and disadvantages of Duroc in comparison to RumiQ Wizard. Finally, I'll be talking about my personal experience with Duroc, how it sounds, what are my op opinions and impressions on how it transformed my system, and finally, is it worth the 250 extra dollars you'll have to spend to upgrade, for example, your 2x4 HD to the DDRC24, which is the Duroc capable model. The DDRC24 you can buy standalone for $500, the 2x4 HD you can buy for $205, and then add the $250 Duroc upgrade. Duroc is essentially a more refined, simplified, and easier to use version of RumiQ Wizard that operates on a completely different approach to DSP. The Duroc approach is to correct power response versus just frequency response. Power response, in the way Duroc does it, is to correct over multiple points in your listening area. Duroc uses nine different points. This is compared to RumiQ Wizard, which the standard measurement is off of one point. The standard measurement and correction is off of one point. Obviously, and I know many people do this, take multiple point measurements with RumiQ Wizard and then average them all together then do the correction, but again, this does not correct for power response. It only corrects for measured frequency response. Duroc also corrects for impulse and time alignment issues. This is really impressive and also allows a much tighter and coherent sound and can also help with imaging. The way you use Duroc um, in the mini DSP system is you have to set up everything other than frequency correction with mini DSP before you start using Duroc. This means time alignment um, of your subwoofers and speakers or whatever your outputs are. You must do the time alignment first, crossover must be done first, any of the compression or uh, parametric EQ should be done first. And of course, level matching should be done as close as possible before you start the Duroc process. So essentially everything should be done except for the equalization that you will add on or the DSP correction. Duroc is very, very easy to use in comparison to RumiQ Wizard. As you've noticed, the Rumi Q Wizard video was like 50 minutes long that I made. The Duroc video shouldn't have to exist because of how easy it is. If I do get a lot of requests on making a video on how Duroc works, how I can set up Duroc, how to use Duroc, I will do it, but it's really very simple and there's lots of documentation online. The whole Duroc process is centered around a few very simple steps. The first step is to tell Duroc what type of system you are using. Is it a stereo or is it a multi-channel system? The next step is to tell Duroc um, what gain, what microphone you're using, import a calibration file, and to set your levels. Setting levels with Duroc is significantly easier than setting levels with RumiQ Wizard. You gotta get a frequency generator, play pink noise at a certain level, open the SPL meter, um, choose and set it to 75 decibels if you can, and then you have to hope that when you do your measurements, it measures at 75 decibel. In my case, it did never measure at 75 decibel. Doing Duroc is significantly easier. You just press play button on the Duroc interface and adjust the volume of your system until it hits the center of the little green box on the calibration meter. It's very simple, really easy to do. Next step is to tell Duroc what type of system you're going to be correcting for, what type of seating arrangement you're going to be correcting for. You can correct for a chair, a sofa, or an auditorium. I will be talking later about these three options and which one you should choose, but in, just to clear it up, the one that worked best for me was Sofa. Next, all you have to do is place your microphone in the nine predetermined positions that Duroc tells you to. Press play for each one, and Duroc will take three measurements for each position. You move the microphone, you press play, and that's it. The next part is really what makes Duroc special, and this is the ability to create your own target curve, or your own house curve. After you've taken your measurements, Duroc will automatically create a predetermined house curve or target curve based on what they think sounds best and would work best for your measurements. The Duroc target curve is very good and it usually consists of a very slight bass boost and a very slight treble, uh, rolling treble fall off. And that is a very pleasing sound and I'd say it's 
similar to what the Harmon reference curve is, which is essentially a slightly boosted bass and a slightly uh, attenuated treble. Now, as a tweaker, I like to create my own target curves. So Duroc allows you to add, I think, I don't know the maximum number, but it's a lot, of target points which you can drag around and move however you want. As you can see in this Duroc window, I have created my own target curve, which consists of a bass boost centered around 60 hertz, which is around 4 decibels high, and it's just a, the little bump, and then it also has a 1 decibel attenuated treble going from 200 hertz to 20k. So it's just a falling response. This lets me have a very, very pleasing sound, and this is sort of my reference listening curve. Now, Duroc allows you to store four profiles, and these four profiles can be four different speakers that you have, four different, uh, you know, EQs, four different target curves, anything really. It can just four different Duroc's you can store in the software, and as long as you're tethered to the mini DSP, you can instantly switch between these two in real time. This is super helpful if you want to compare the differences between your target curve and a perfectly neutral response, and it really is pretty awesome how this works. For example, in my slot number one, I have my listening curve, which is this one that you see here with the bass boost, and in slot number two, I have my perfectly flat neutral curve, which is what I use if I'm ever doing any audio production, video work, and or comparing against um, other speakers for you know evaluative purposes. Here are just the really quick downsides I have with the way that the Rock software works. First of all, when you click the optimize button and it creates that green line, it looks very impressive. It's extremely flat. In reality, and after I've taken measurements, it's not anywhere nearly near as flat as it, as it looks on the screen. Um, in reality, there's lots of bumps and it's not anywhere near as flat as a Rumi Q wizard measurement and correction. Now the reason for this is because Duroc is correcting for a power, um, is for power response, not just frequency response. So obviously if you're going to get it to sound good in nine different points, the frequency response is going to be different than getting it to sound perfect in one point. Now many people will be bugged by this and people will want to go back to Rumi Q Wizard because it's not the flattest response, but I can tell you that this does sound the best. Duroc also lets you separately from their own profiles where um, you might be able to store different speakers to simply export your target curve. This allows you to uh, you know, maybe send your target curve to your friend and have them try it out, and it also allows you to share different target curves and import your same target curve for different speakers. This is really useful, for example, if you have three different speakers that you use regularly and you want to have the same target curve on all of them, but you don't want to have to enter the points in, again, exactly where they are. You can just export the curve and import it on the other configuration file. Now I want to talk about, subjectively, my experience with the Duroc software and how it helped my speakers. For those who don't know, my system consists of an Emotiva XDA2 DAC, the DDRC24 um, after the DAC, and that feeds into the Adcom GFA545 power amplifier, which then feeds into my Spica TC50 loudspeakers, which have crossover modifications done. Uh, all the, they've been sonic capped. They, you know, lots of modifications done to them, and they have improved connectors from electro tube connectors. Now, I'm not really into the whole snake oil crossover thing, but yes, replacing the cheap bad crossovers and the Spicas with quality components does make a difference. Sent coming from my uh, DDRC24 output, my secondary outputs. It's feeding two Miller & Kreisel VX7 Mark II 8-inch subwoofers. Now in the past, these subwoofers, when I've been using Rumi Q Wizard, have been DSP'd flat to around 10 Hz, which is pretty remarkable. Now this system is a very, very good system. I've heard many, many, many high-end systems, and I really do like this system. It's very revealing. The Spikos are really special speakers. Now I know their limitations. The Spikos don't play above 17 Hz, 17,000 Hz, 17 kilohertz and they do image very, very far back. I know these speakers well. They also don't have like any bass at all. The first time I did Duroc, I used the chair listening position setting, which is uh, eight points centered very closely around your head with one central point where, you're, uh, where your ears are supposed to be. The chair setting didn't work very well for me. There was almost no sub bass. It cut out almost all of the sub bass. There was a, it added a lot of mid bass, so a lot of chest thump, but not, no real depth beneath it. And it also created the fuzziest and most indistinct imaging I've ever heard on a pair of speakers. There was literally no image 
it was just a wall of very veiled, strange noise coming at me. While the actual quality of these speakers didn't really get worse, a lot of the imaging and bass really suffered. I reached out to a lot of my forum members and emailed the CEO of Mini DSP, um, and they helped me by telling me that I should consider using the sofa um, profile, even though I'm not sitting on a sofa. The wider placement of the measurement points significantly improved the sound. The imaging was as tight as it was before I uh, used a rock, and the bass issues were completely resolved. The bass issues were further helped by creating my own target curve with the bass boost. Now I want to tell you the good thing. Duroc seriously changed the way my system sounds for the better. Um, there is really no comparison. It is a very, very dramatic difference. Um, and because of the way the mini DSP software works and the Duroc software works, I can turn Duroc on and off um, simply by pressing a button so I can A, B what it sounds like with and without correction. Now the difference between uncorrected and Rumi Q Wizard was there, but it was not nearly as large as the difference between Duroc and Uncorrected. Most of the differences I heard with the Rumi Q Wizard were in the bass area, the below 200 hertz area, and it really smoothed it out. It took care of a lot of the room modes. But in the treble, I really didn't hear, and in the treble and mid-range, I really didn't hear that much of a difference. The only thing I heard is it managed to um, get rid of uh, the uh, treble spikes that my spikers naturally have. They're naturally a little bit bright. So it took care of those, but it wasn't an improvement. It was just a difference in the way the EQ was. With Duroc, I really noticed an improvement in the way the audio sounded. It added a lot of depth to my system. It also added a lot of depth and uh, warmth to male vocals especially, and all vocals. They seemed a lot um, have a lot more body surrounding them. They really popped out of the mix more. With the uh, with Duroc disabled, vocal piece seemed to be like behind the mix. Like actually in the, in the way the imaging worked, it was behind the mix. While with Duroc on, the vocals like actually were separated and came out in front of the mix. Not to the point where I would call the imaging forward imaging. It was still pushed backwards. Like my spike is imaged very far back. Um, but the imaging, the, the, the way the vocals separated from the rest of the mix was really interesting. I liked that a lot. I think that mostly had to do with the timing and phase issues that Duroc was able to correct. Not as much with the frequency response, but whatever they're doing, it's working wonderfully. Duroc also managed to essentially almost fix a massive room mode I have in my system at around 200 hertz. This sucks the life out of kick drums, and it basically robs all of the chest punch, all of the punch basically, um, out, of, out, of a, out of your music. And as you can see on the graph, you can see there's the dip right there. That's on the right speaker, because the right speaker is a little bit worse because of the way uh, my room is oriented. It's a little bit worse than with the left speaker. And on the left speaker, it managed to almost completely fix the dip. And on the right speaker, it took around 15 decibels off of the dip. So it's really, really insane difference. Listening to the um, Hotel California live edition off of Hell Freezes Over the Eagles live CD, the kick drum at the beginning actually hits you hard versus the sort of boom, boom that I heard before. It's, an, it's a lot more impactful. Overall, Duroc completely transformed my system. It's very difficult for me to think of another $250 upgrade that would, do, that would make more of a difference. Um, even $500, if you don't have a DSP solution right now and you just want, and you're just starting out with DSP and you want to get a processor and you decide to go with the DDRC, DDRC24 for $500, I, I, it's very difficult for me to think of an upgrade that would make that much of a difference. Unless you have, you know, $80 speakers and you're thinking about getting $580 speakers, that's where the difference might be. But if you have a decent to very good system, th that's what I would say. Um, $500 speakers plus, you might, that's when I would start to see maybe the differences that Duroc brings and the differences that a speaker upgrade would bring be on the same level. Or if your speakers are higher end, you know, maybe $1,500 plus, and I'm talking about new prices, of course, $1,500 plus, that's when you might say 
you know, Duroc is going to make more of a difference than a $500 speaker upgrade is going to make for me. Really, the um, what I would do if I were you is download the Duroc trial from their, Duroc's website, try it out, and that will allow you to see the difference that Duroc will make for your system before you commit to a processor solution. And I would definitely 100% urge you to go with a processor solution versus just the Duroc software because the processor solution will allow, it's just infinitely more customizable. You can set up crossovers. You can set up separate parametric EQ that you can't do when you're just running Duroc software. You can uh, do time correction, time alignment, and you can do level matching. Uh, I just really quickly wanted to talk about the products that Duroc is available for. Unlike Room EQ Wizard, where it's more of a, uh, oh yes, some products will allow you to use it. Some processors that allow you to import data will allow you to use it. Duroc is used on many, many different products. First of all, they're used on many of the mini, DS, mini, mini DSP products. There's the DDRC24, DDRC88, and all of the uh, Nano AVR uh, products, and there's the, uh, the DDRC22, and stuff like that that have Duroc software support. Now, the mini DSP products are one segment, that's more of like the DIY oriented, but if you want to get the Duroc performance in an all-in-one, easy-to-use package, take a look at the Emotiva uh, processors and receivers now, and take a look at the Anthem processors and receivers. Overall, I wanted to conclude this review just saying that yes, DSP is actually the future. Considering the insane difference that Duroc and RumiQ Wizard was able to make on my system, I highly recommend it. And definitely let me know in the comment section below whether you have any questions on how Duroc works, I'm happy to answer it. Um, and also, please let me know whether you want me to make a Duroc guide video. It's very simple, there's lots of documentation online, but if it would help you maybe make the decision to purchase something that has Duroc in it, which I'd love to see, um, please let me know and I will consider making a guide video on how to use it. Thank you for watching this video, I really appreciate it. Make sure you stay subscribed to the channel um, so you can see more content and uh, happy listening.